Howdy, and welcome to Mosquito Surveillance and Sampling. Routine surveillance is a cornerstone of good mosquito control. A control program really cannot and should not operate without one. Routine surveillance can keep control personnel informed about locations of major breeding areas, help to identify problem sites where control should be concentrated. Carefully interpreted survey data can also provide vital information. So what kind of information can be gleaned from surveillance? The first is to determine whether or not a mosquito problem exists in an area. Next, we're going to determine what mosquito species is involved and whether or not we know that mosquito to be a vector of human disease. Next, we're going to evaluate the relative size of the mosquito population from area to area. It also allows you to locate overposition sites, and these are the areas in which the females lay their eggs. Next, it can help determine the best time to apply pesticides. And finally, it allows you to evaluate the effectiveness of the control measures you've put into place. Surveys and surveillance are a little different. A survey is a one-time initial basic survey of an area. They're usually conducted during the planning phase of a mosquito control program. They help you again to locate breeding sites, identify mosquito species, and then decide what type of control is needed or appropriate for certain areas. Surveillance is a continuous operational survey, and it should include a variety of techniques, show a change in mosquito species and relative abundance over time, and tell you the effectiveness of those control tactics. There are a couple of disadvantages to surveys, but not from an effectiveness standpoint. Most of the time when people talk about disadvantages, they talk about time and labor, and the fact that they're very costly. Often it's one of the first services cut by a control agency. Surveillance can be done in various different ways, and the way you should generally start is by using maps. Road, street maps, drainage canal maps, storm drains, and sewer maps. Water drainage systems that carry rainwater out of towns and cities can be both man-made and natural. Culverts, storm drains, and roadside dishes that become clogged, allowing water to pool, can become mosquito breeding areas. It's important to keep these areas cleaned out, remove the weeds and silt, and that will help to prevent mosquito problems. This is particularly true for areas that hold water for a week or two after a rain, but are dry during other times. Such areas will breed floodwater mosquitoes, but will not hold water long enough for large populations of natural mosquito predators, such as fish, to become established. Ditches that hold water have populations of fish, beetles, dragonflies, and other organisms that feed on mosquitoes, and these will help to keep mosquito populations down. Mosquitoes will be among the first organisms to return to pools that form in a cleaned out ditch following a rain. In the absence of predators, mosquitoes will develop undisturbed unless closely watched. It's important to take all the information about drainage, road and streets maps, sewers, aerial photography, and then go out and physically examine the area. The best way to conduct habitat survey is by foot, inspecting each site for evidence of mosquito breeding sites. This ensures a thorough inspection and allows the inspector to become familiar with the area and its inhabitants. Reducing the amount of breeding areas in a town will save the technician both time and work. It's important to focus on bottles, cans, tires, stagnant drainage ditches, and other sites that produce mosquitoes. This also gives the technician the opportunity to educate the public about mosquito breeding sites. When sampling for mosquitoes, you sample in essentially four different ways because you're going to sample for four different stages of the mosquito. If you remember, we have eggs, larvae, and pupae, which are all aquatic, and we have adults, which are terrestrial. Sampling for eggs provides the most precise data on breeding sites, but it's also the most difficult type of sampling. There are a couple of different ways to sample for eggs. One is a damp soil collection, and you do that to obtain floodwater mosquitoes, and you can take water samples to collect standing water mosquitoes. 
There's also a way to sample for exits a bit more passive, and that's an oviposition trap. And essentially what these are, are uh, jars that are used for collecting container breeding mosquitoes, especially in the genus Aedes. Counting eggs collected from this oviposition trap will give a good indication of the number of Aedes larvae that will hatch in an area following the next rain. The oviposition jar should be black, plastic, or glass, and the traps are usually placed in a shaded area filled with water, usually with a few dried leaves or dried grass at the bottom, and then some sort of substrate is placed against the edge of the jar to act as an actual oviposition site. This site can be made of a number of different materials, such as seed germination paper, muslin, formica, balsa wood, some sort of tongue depressor, many different things, and then it's placed vertically inside the container with the water covering about half of it. Gravid or egg-filled females usually use that substrate to lay the eggs above the water surface and usually should check the traps about every 10 to 14 days or so. When sampling for eggs, identification is usually done using egg keys or the eggs can be reared to either larvae or adults. Like I mentioned, while egg sampling is by far the most accurate, it's the most time consuming and difficult type of survey to do. So now let's talk about sampling for larvae and pupae. Remember, all the stages we've talked about up to this point have all been aquatic, including larvae and pupae. So larvae surveillance is usually used to identify breeding habitats, to check for suspect habitats, and to monitor populations. The most common way this is accomplished is by doing dip sampling. Estimates of population densities of larvae can be obtained by counting the number of larvae captured per dip using this standard size dipper. Three to five dips should be taken at each site, and the number of dips counted and the number of larvae in each dip should be recorded. Information on the life stage of the larvae and pupae should also be recorded. By noting number of larvae in each instar or size category, such as small, medium, large, and the number of pupae per dip, and perhaps the water temperature, the investigator or technician will be able to make an educated guess as to when mosquitoes will emerge and what control efforts should be used. Generally, larvae develop faster at higher temperatures, so that's why this information is useful. Dip sampling can indicate if larvae are present or absent in a particular or suspect habitat. If larvae are collected, they can be preserved and identified later to determine the species that were present at each sampling location. Collections should be made along the edges of the pooled areas, especially around clumps of weeds and in shaded areas. Dip sampling can also provide the relative number of mosquitoes in a particular habitat. Major mosquito problems will also be found. Major mosquito problems are often found in ditches that are polluted from discharge from malfunctioning septic tanks or other organic material. The southern house mosquito, Culex quinquefasciatus, prefers breeding in the site that's polluted with sewage and other high organic materials. Just about anything that holds water can breed mosquitoes. Old washing machines, boats, horse troughs, steel drums, plastic containers, glass bottles, aluminum cans, and tires are just a few of the artificial containers where mosquitoes are found. Used tires make an excellent mosquito breeding site, and tire piles are a tremendous problem for many towns and cities. They hold water, they're dark, they have a rough inner wall, which is ideal for egg laying. It's important to find ways to properly dispose of used tires. This is one of the most difficult problems that face mosquito control agencies today. Tree holes provide breeding sites for a variety of mosquitoes. Parks and hardwood stands in towns can be surveyed for tree holes and marked on habitat maps. These holes can be treated or sealed with some sort of tree patch material or are possibly filled with sand. 
Once collections of larvae or pupae are made, mosquito breeders can be used to allow the mosquitoes to complete their life cycle and contain the mosquitoes for identification more easily. Adult mosquito surveillance is a very important part of any mosquito program. Adult surveillance will provide information on the effectiveness of the larvicide program and of the potential effectiveness of a spraying program. However, the presence of some adult mosquitoes does not mean that the efforts are not working. No program will be successful in totally eradicating mosquitoes. Adult mosquito survey indicates the relative abundance of the species, the extent of the mosquito problem, if control should be initiated, and what type of mosquito control should be used. The equipment needed to collect adult mosquitoes is generally more complicated and expensive than what we've seen so far for collecting larvae. Adult mosquitoes are fragile, and they readily lose body parts, wings, and other things when handled roughly, which makes identification difficult and sometimes impossible. Some special collection equipment we're going to talk about is designed to capture adult mosquitoes with minimum damage. There are three types of ways that we survey for adult mosquitoes. Surveying for flying mosquitoes, surveying for feeding mosquitoes, and surveying for mating mosquitoes. Mosquitoes rest in dark, damp, cool places such as vegetation, the edges of the forest, in high grass, in garages, attics, stables, and basements. To collecting these areas, you might try one of two or three options. There are a number of different sweep nets available. You can use a vacuum type piece of equipment, and then there's also multiple different types of aspirators. So here's an example of sweep netting. This is simply just walking through an area and sweeping the area with an insect net and determining what insects are present. Here's an example of a backpack mounted vacuum for collecting mosquitoes. Adult mosquitoes, especially Anopheles, can be found during daytime resting in both natural and artificial shelters. These areas possibly include houses, barns, sheds, bridges, culverts, hollow trees, cliffs, and foliage. Counts of mosquitoes utilizing these daytime resting shelters can give a good indication of population density. Mosquitoes found in these shelters can easily be collected with an aspirator. Here's a couple of examples of potential resting spots. Here we have a carport. Here is evidence of a number of mosquitoes that have been trapped in a spider web. Spider webs can also be utilized as a survey tool. You can also use artificial resting sites. These traps are designed to capture recently fed mosquitoes seeking a secluded place to rest while they process their blood meals. They can either be painted red, which generally insects cannot see, or black. I will tell you, black ones are more difficult for the technicians to locate. This is an example of a trap sold by BioQuip that is designed to capture recently fed mosquitoes. This resting trap is about $100, and it again provides mosquitoes a secluded place to rest while they process their blood meals, where they're sucked into a little bag with a vacuum. Sampling adult mosquitoes can also involve some active mosquito collections, and these are landing rate counts, landing rate collections. Landing rate counts is exactly what you think it is. A person stands out in the middle of a mosquito area, waits a particular amount of time, and you count the number of mosquitoes that land on the person. Landing rate collections work very much in the same way, but instead of just counting the mosquito, you're using some type of aspirator to actually collect them. There are a number of different aspirators that are useful for mosquito collecting. There are ones that are battery operated, some that are rechargeable battery operated, and some that are just operated via a human being, either sucking or blowing. Sampling adult mosquitoes can also be done with traps, and there's a number of different types. There's a couple of different light traps, CDC light traps, California and New Jersey light traps, and then there are gravid traps. 
The CDC light trap, originally developed by the Centers for Disease Control, is a portable model that is very widely used for mosquito surveillance. This is a standard trap used for monitoring many biting insects, and it's generally set up using a source of CO2, which is dry ice in this photo, and that mimics a breathing host. Additionally, there's a light attractant and a fan that draws mosquitoes and other biting flies into the collection chamber. It can be used with either the net that you see here or more of a kill jar. Generally, these traps are battery operated and are usually set on a timer so that they come on at dusk and then turn back off at dawn. Timing devices are often installed to conserve batteries. There are many different types of light traps, including the model on the left that's generally used by the US military for sand fly and other biting fly surveillance, and the model on the right is used by universities. This is a New Jersey light trap. This is one of the original mosquito survey traps developed in response to disease outbreaks in the 1930s. This trap remains among one of the most productive and efficient traps available on the market. It indicates species and relative abundance of populations and helps formulate hatch predictions. This light trap is usually a larger metal device, usually located at a somewhat permanent sampling station. This trap is often also equipped with a timing device that will turn it on and off certain days of the week, and it works on the same principle as the CDC light trap. Some disadvantages of light traps is that they do collect a variety of insects, not just biting flies. Additionally, they're not attractive to all species of mosquitoes, and they're generally not attractive to blood-fed females. So this is a gravid trap. This trap is designed to attract and capture gravid female mosquitoes of a target species, generally in pristine or unharmed condition. The attractant in the bucket is a baited water solution to simulate water found in the natural habitat. Gravid females approach the water to deposit eggs and they're pulled upward into the collecting container housed in the upper compartment and then you remove that net to collect the specimens. Generally, these traps are not used by mosquito control agencies. A final attractant we'll talk about is the mosquito attractant octanol. It's reported to have pheromone-like properties and is used by vector control professionals and researchers to enhance the effectiveness of all of the different types of mosquito traps. A small amount of this chemical is applied to a cotton wick or some other material near the intake of the trap and then often will bring in mosquitoes that might not have been attracted otherwise to the trap area. There are other surveillance techniques that you might find useful. One of them is citizen reporting, and like I said, it can be useful and can often indicate where and when populations are high. But citizens are not experts, and often the information they give can be misleading or can exaggerate the situation. It's important to question each caller and sort fact from assumptions. This will also help to determine the validity of each complaint. Some common questions are, are the mosquitoes actually biting or attempting to bite? Are the mosquitoes biting during daylight hours or do they bite at night? Are there areas of flooded forest or clear-cut timber harvest going on nearby? Are the mosquitoes persistently aggressive? Do they try to bite you on your face or your upper body? Or are they sneaky and bite you on the ankles and the lower of the backs of your arms? Have you noticed a problem in the past? Is there currently a mosquito problem in the area? And where have you noticed it? In conclusion on mosquito sampling, no one technique or trap used is adequate to sample the adult populations of all mosquito species in a region. It's very important to use a variety of sampling techniques and traps to get the best data for your program.